Hi, I'm Stephanie. And I'm Justy. And, and together, together we're, we're losing it. it. We've each lost over 100 pounds with the help of diet, exercise, and breaking bad habits. And I also had weight loss surgery in 2020. And I recently had skin removal surgery. We're just sharing our journey and what we've learned throughout the process. And we're not doctors. So if you have any medical questions, reach out to your doctor. Welcome back, friends. We are here for another episode, um, and this time we're going to do a, our quarterly goal checkup. So we're halfway through the year. Already. I know, Ugh. which I can't even wrap my brain around. No, me neither. Yeah, yeah so we're halfway through the year, and, um, you know, we think it's important to not just set goals January 1st, because it's the thing to do, but to follow up every quarter just to make sure that we're in alignment. Is there something we maybe forgot about that we need to like hop back on um, in order for us to finish the year out strong? So uh, we initially started out with a joint, two joint goals. We had a weight goal. We had an activity goal and a mindset goal. So we're going to kind of go through each of those and just talk about where we stand for each I'm going to kick it off with the joint goals. And so the first joint goal was um, that we're going to food prep and plan weekly. And funny enough, we were talking about it before this. And Justy was like, well, somebody moved away because I was right. saying that I, I haven't have my been, meals on wheels anymore. <laughs> right. I haven't been meal prepping as much as I'd like to because I do live in a camper right now. This is my last week in the camper, but I meal prep today. Um, it's a Sunday. I got my meal prep done. Um, it's teeny tiny little containers, but it's done. Um, and that's the start of me recommitting back to it. Um, I will be back to a full size kitchen as of next week. So no excuses. Um, but I am um, getting myself back into meal prep. I've been doing mini meal preps. I'll say I haven't been doing like a full like week meal prep. It's like, oh, well, if I'm going to cook this kielbasa, turkey kielbasa, I'm going to cook the whole thing. I'll do a bag of veggies and I'll divide it in four containers. So I would just, that would be like a random Wednesday that mm -hmm. I cook it. And then I would just have for the next few days. So there was nothing structured, nothing planned, but I would still try to stay in alignment with goals and how I want to eat. And then just make little mini meals out of it and try to fit it in my teeny tiny fridge. Um, so that's kind of where I've been. But even if I have not meal prepped, I do still plan. I make sure that I have like staples in the fridge for things like my little mini protein pizzas that I make and things like that. So for lunch, I could just throw something in the oven real quick or um, breakfast. I always have yogurts on hand. So I would plan it. I would go to the grocery store with a plan in mind, but I have definitely faltered a bit, but I'm back on track. So what about yeah, you, Justy? For and I, um, I'm doing really, I'm doing actually really good since my um, personal chef has gone. Um, the funny thing is, is we both meal prepped this week, and we meal prepped the same thing without talking to each other, or basically the same thing. So I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, I'm kind of doing the same thing. So um, I just opened a bakery on, I guess, a week and a half ago, and so my life has been just kind of crazy, um, doing that, but I didn't use that as an excuse. Um, but I, I'll go buy some protein and veggies and stuff like that on a Sunday and cook that. And then I'll go probably do another thing on Wednesday or Thursday and cook that. So like, just like you, I split it up into like four containers and that's kind of what I have. I always have yogurt on hand and cottage cheese, so eggs, stuff like that. So it's not as regimented as I was doing before when we were doing our meal prep, like Mondays and stuff like that, but I'm doing it and I'm not, um, grab ass eating and I'm not eating just, you know, like a mad woman. So I'm right. pretty much on, on point. I have noticed since I've working out more like harder workouts that I'm definitely hungrier. And so um, I'm just really focusing on protein first and that sort of thing. So yeah, I feel like I'm doing good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will say I am snacking more than I was before. So that's something, while that's not necessarily a part of this, um, I feel like if I get back on track with the more planned out meals, I'll, I won't snack as much. Now the snacking is not always terrible snacking. It's still turkey sticks and cheese, but you can overeat healthy food too. We all know that. Um, mm -hmm. but there is also it's summer and, um, with the kids and my husband likes to snack and eat 
whatever skittles um snickers you know and not gain a pound um and so <laughs> that stuff is all here so i have to make the wise decisions and i don't always make the wise decisions so i just have to i feel like getting myself back on meal prep and having these meals and they're well thought out well rounded it'll keep me from snacking as much so we're we're back in action so <laughs> summer's a doozy that's for sure yeah, um, and I would say that I'm um I am doing the meal prep probably twice a week and and prepping, but I haven't been doing as diligent of a plan every day. So yeah. I'm I'm kind of like, well, in my head I know what I'm gonna be eating today, but I'm not as um diligent about it. So I, I would like to get back to that. I do have an accountability partner. We text each other every morning what we're gonna eat. And so I put something on paper, but it's kind of like eh, best choice for lunch is a lot for me, that sort of thing. So I, I do need to get back um, into doing that. So um, meal prepping, yes, the planning every day, which has gotten me to where I am. Honestly, I haven't been as good at, so um, I don't need, I don't want to let that go. <laughs> this is a good reminder. Why, I have to here. Right. And that's why we do these goal checkups, because let's say we didn't have this conversation today. And in mm -hmm. another three months, it would be, maybe we're not meal prepping at all. Maybe you're not writing it right. down. Maybe you're not texting your accountability mm -hmm. partner. So this is just kind of that like, shake it up, wake up call, like, Hey, you're slipping. Let's get it back. Right. Because we, right. we, we did start the year off really, really strong. Mm -hmm. Um, and like then, <laughs> right. And then life happens. I moved, um, you know, and, and cause even when I was there, one of us meal prepped, one of us always meal right. prepped. We either yeah. did it together or you did it and gave me some, or I did it and gave you some, however mm -hmm. it happened. One of us always meal prep, mm -hmm. but then like I left. So something changed. And as one little thing changes, other little things change. Mm -hmm. Um, but now this is our wake up call. Like we've got to get back to it. And funny enough, we both did. And we prepped almost identical meals, which will be funny. We need to, um, share it on Instagram. <laughs> we'll post right. our right our meals from, you know, I don't know how many hundred miles apart of almost very similar ingredients. We'll put it yeah, that way. That's hilarious. Um, um, so what's the next one? So our next joint goal was a uh, bi-weekly podcast, mm -hmm. which we were bi-weekly for when we started. And then we went to weekly because we were like, I have so much to say. Um, and then as everything else, life happened and we had to back off um, just with the me moving your restaurant or bakery, I should say opening, um, we took a little break. We came back um, with one in June, but then we skipped again. Um, so we're back to at least bi-weekly, if not weekly. We're getting ourselves caught back up now. So I feel like we're yeah. good to go. And, and I think um, our goal of bi-weekly was doable. We went a little over over that. And, you know, I think it's, I mean, it's our podcast, so we can have and flow as we right. need to right. uh, with okay. life. And, you know, I had a little surgery in there, like stuff right. moved. So, but we at least stuck with our bi-weekly. And I think we have enough to talk about to continue with that. Um, I have a lot of ideas in my head a lot of things I want to talk about. Um, so, um, I'm, I don't know. I've just, I've been really excited about, um, helping people with weight loss. And so I just, I just want to, I just want to do it. Oh, look at that. I just want to do it. Um, I want to just, I want to do it in a more meaningful way. Cause we have been doing podcasts and I think a lot of our stuff that we're doing is helpful to people. A lot of people reach out to me on Instagram, but I feel like I just, my, my soul, I want to take it to some next level. I don't know what that is, but right. I really feel like that's what got us here. Yeah. Because yeah. we were like, there right. we have more to offer. I don't know what that is. And then we're like, let's do a podcast. So, yeah. 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 So the universe is speaking to you, Jesse, again, it, it is. And I always listen to my universe. So right. um, I just got to figure out what that is. And, and, and maybe somebody that's listening will come up with a suggestion, but I do want to be more meaningful with the things I'm putting on Instagram and more helpful um, around mindset. I think that's the biggest thing that we can do um, is change our mindset. Uh, Cause that, that is uh that will get, that's what gets in our way. <laughs> and with that being said, I have a lot of guests in mind that I want to bring on. And one of them is um, actually two of them that I'd like to have on are based around um, uh, mindset and um, like therapy. And mm -hmm. so that's a whole nother several topics, but um, I kind of want to bring some people in on that. So I have some ideas around that. So we should be right. seeing that coming soon. Nice. Um, next is our weight goal. So ultimately the weight goal 
while, you know, everybody can say the number on the scale is just a number, blah, blah, blah. But our whole life, we've been looking at these numbers. It is a data point, And that is was our ultimate goal where these other goals cascaded from. So doing the podcast help us to stay in line with, you know, um, with our goals to get to this weight goal. Um, same with um, the food prep. That's what's going to get us in line with this weight goal and all of these other things. So the, the weight goal was kind of the ultimate. And we didn't over um, commit to a weight goal. We didn't commit to what the BMI says that we should be. We committed right. to a number that we knew we would be comfortable and healthy with. Um, and so for me, my original was 165. And then I kind of wanted to take it a little further. And I think I bumped it to 155. And I got down below that. And I, the last two times I weighed myself, I don't weigh every day anymore. I just don't feel like it's necessary. Um, but it's been 161 both times. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's kind of, I'm living right around the 160 mark and I'm okay with that. Yeah. And I, uh, my goal is 180 and I've been bouncing between 185 and 190. Uh, lately it's been closer to the 190. Um, I'm also okay with that because, you know, in the last two months, I also lost 11 inches off my body. So uh, I'm doing a lot of weightlifting and that sort of thing. So I'm good with it. If I get to the 180, um, that'll be great to hit that goal, but I want to do it in a way that is healthy to me. And that I'm still feeling good about myself and feeling strong. Um, I don't even know if that's where I want to live. Cause I feel really, really good right now. Um, right. I feel, I like my curves. Um, I feel sexy. I feel beautiful. Um, I feel healthy. I feel strong. I feel like I look good. And those are things I've never really been able to say, honestly. Right. Um, so the, the number is just the number at this point. Um, I will be having skin removal surgery again, probably not January. I think I'm going to push it back a little bit because I'm just not ready to go through that again, but on my legs. And so it's very important to me that I keep my strength. And so the strength is more important than the number on the scale, but I'm still working towards it. Um, and, you know, I'll get there. And if I don't, eh, I'm not going to gain fat. We'll put it that way. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and strength, yeah. strength training has been something that we both have been working on. And it's been your ultimate, you know, workout of choice and whatnot. And for me, I was more, I was doing more cardio with a little bit of the strength mixed into it. And now I'm starting to do more of the strength and just a little bit of cardio. So as I hit like the halfway point, of the year, um, that leads me into the activity goal. My activity goal was to run 12, five K races. And while I'm still doing that, um, and I'm one ahead because I did June, but I did two earlier in the year. So I've got seven under my belt. Well, minimum of five K. Some of them have been five mile, four mile, whatever. I have one coming up that is, um, I'll be doing a Ragnar and that's going to be several races in one day. So um, minimum of 5k, but I've been meeting that and I'm one ahead for the year because I doubled up one month. Oh, and then I have, um, July I'm doing a duathlon. So that's bike. And I did it in 20, 2020, 2021. I did it 2020. I don't remember 2020. I think no, it had to be 2021. Cause that was COVID. But anyway, I, that was my first ever race was the duathlon. So I'm doing that again. Um, so that is bike and run. And so I'm excited for that. So that's obviously more than a 5k, but I'm counting that, at, you know, towards my goal. So mm -hmm. basically races, 12 races a year, minimum of a 5k. Um, so I'm still doing those, but I'm not running as much in between. I'm really enjoying doing body pump classes and strength training classes, um, some stretching classes. If I can't make it to a class, then I'll do, um, I, I like the women's room. I'm still the girl who likes the women's room. I don't like to be out on the floor with, you know, grunting men and that kind of thing. Um, I really like the new gym that I go to. And so I go to the women's room there. And if I'm not doing a class, I'll do um, either upper or lower on the machines. Um, and then I'll run one mile and I'm pushing myself for that mile to just run as hard as I can on a treadmill. But it is what it is. Um, and so I've gotten myself to just under 11 minutes a mile for one mile by pushing myself to just run really hard. 
So that's kind of where I've been with activity, but we're both, we've both gotten to a place where like strength training is important to us because I am looking at like my calves and my arms and like even this part of my arm, I, like this could tighten up. I can tighten that up and it's just a matter of some strength training and whatnot. So that's kind of a more of a focus for me, but I'm still sticking with my 12 races. Yeah. And so my, my fitness goal was to, um, become certified to be a body pump coach by the end of the year, which I'm still, uh, I signed up actually for my certification in November. So I have till November to get ready for it. And I'm kind of making a plan for that. Um, but I am having some issues. I, 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 um, my recovery from my surgery took a lot longer than I thought. Um, cause I thought I was superwoman and, uh, you I'm are. not. I'm not. Uh, and then I had to have, um, I had some issues, uh, and I had to have another surgery. Um, and, uh, cause I had some atypical glandular cells. Uh, so I had to have, um, like, a um, elite procedure, which is a female uh, procedure. And then so that kind of put me down for a minute. And then now my knees are like, yeah, bitch, you're 46. So why are you trying to do whatever you're doing? So I'm doing physical therapy for that and trying to strengthen those muscles, around my knee, um, both my knees. And so, but I'm still going to do this body pump thing. Like I'm not going to allow, you know, people have bad knees, people have shit going on and I need to still hit my goals when I have uh, life happen. So I'm going to do that in November and hopefully I pass, uh, if I don't, well, then I'll sign up for, I, I'll sign up for December and, and get it done by the end of the year. Well, you, I mean, you do body pump classes very regularly. Oh, so yeah. I just, I don't see it being a problem for you. Of course, there's always that piece in your mind where you're like, maybe I won't be able to, cause that we're human and mm -hmm. that's how we think. Right. Um, but mm -hmm. I feel like the fact that you do them very regularly, like, I don't think it'll be a problem for you. And you have right. Phil, your, your previous, you know, I don't know if you're still, if he's still coaching you or not. I don't think no, he's you don't got go to that knee problems too. So we're both. Uh, we're taking yeah. a hiatus, but we'll get back to each other. But yeah, so, and I'm, I know I can do it. I'm, I'm kind of my trainer at the gym. So I'm kind of a badass. Like I can lift a lot of weights. And um, for me, it's more just the, the coordin is the cord is, what is that called? You can't even say the word girl. I can't even say the word coordination, the coordination of it, yeah, you know, just it, kind yeah. of the teaching and talking at the same time. Yeah. Um, it was a funny story is I went and did this heavy lifting and strength training class on Saturday and I walk in and I'm the only woman and the trainer went over real quick and got smaller weights and put them at the stations. And I was like, no, sir, we will not need smaller weights <laughs> just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I need smaller weights. And so I was bound to determine to lift those heavy weights that the men are lifting and it almost right. killed me, but I did it. And yeah. I <laughs> And had he not done that, had those smaller weights been out before I walked in, I probably would have used them, but that's just my stubborn, you know. Well, mindset. and that's also the universe. That yeah. is the universe. Mm -hmm. It lined up that way to force you out of your comfort zone to right. try because you're stubborn yeah. and you're like, no, nobody's going to beat me. And right. so, mm -hmm. um, but had, like you said, had it been there, you would have done the lighter ones. And that mm -hmm. was kind of me on the, on the treadmill, um, there was people walk already. I was running faster than them. There was only people walking on the treadmill. And I was like, I'm going to run real fast. Watch this. Mm -hmm. And that pushed me to run like even faster. I was like, why don't I do this more often? Why don't I put, you get uh -huh. so comfortable when you know exactly what weights to put on, you know, exactly mm -hmm. what you're doing. Like, sometimes you just have to like step out of that comfort zone and realize like, oh shit, I can run not for very long, but I was able to run, um, like eight, eight and a half minute, um, pace on the treadmill for a couple of minutes. And I was like, okay, right, right. so why don't I push myself more? So it was just having other people around and our competitive nature that's mm -hmm. pushing us to do more than we can. Which is why I love to do the group fitness classes, because when I work out, honestly, I don't work out as hard as I do when other people, when I'm competing against somebody else. And so, right. yeah, so right. I, I really like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. So we're on track there. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that you're going to be just fine with that. Thank you. Um, our last is mindset. And so for, for mindset goals, mine was to continue with monthly therapy. I fired the first two therapists that I had because they were terrible, quite honestly. It's really hard to find a good therapist. Um, and I don't know if I'm just looking incorrectly 
um, because everyone that I, each one that I have found, the first one just listened to me talk, but never talked through anything with me or gave me any like um, strategies or like things to do. She would just like listen and agree with everything I said. And I was like, I have girlfriends who do that. I don't, I'm not paying you to just listen and agree. So fired that one. And then I found another one. And at first I was like, okay, this is great. Cause she was giving me like these packets to work on like perfectionism and like, here's some take home, some homework, whatever. Well, then it was like, I was working on these packets in my own time. And then we would come back for our next meeting and we would just talk about what I wrote in the packet. And then she would give me another one. And I'm like, that's, I could download these on the internet and do that myself again. Like I need someone that's going to guide me. And then, um, I decided I really had a a good connection um, with Rodolfo Alvarez, who's part of the bariatric community. Um, he is a mindset um, coach, a, like a wellness mindset coach. And I did some of his um, emotional eating classes through um, Bari Nation, which is a membership community that I'm part of for bariatrics. And so I joined some of his stuff and I really had a great connection with him and I liked everything that he was saying. And I was like, you know, I don't know that I'd need as much therapy as I need more of a Rodolfo in my life right now. That's just going to help me work through my emotional intelligence and, and keeping my emotions under control. Not that I'm like an overly emotional person, but I can snap um, and I can shut down. And those are things that I needed to work past. And he did a great job working with me on those things. And so I just did a, it was a three month program and I just had my last one last week. So I'm going to give myself a small break couple of weeks and then I will find I'll start the hot pursuit for a new therapist for some one-on-one but I think I'm going to look a little bit differently because I was looking before for someone who had experience in like eating disorders because that's all that they list not that I, I don't feel that I have an eating disorder but I want someone who can help me with like emotional eating and that kind of stuff but at the same time I think I just want someone that can help me with life I don't I think I need to stop the look looking for someone that's got some type of like eating anything right? and just find a therapist who uh, maybe um, cog- cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, maybe look for something like that. Um, so I think I'm going to look differently and see if I can find someone um, that suits me. So let's see if three times the charm, because my work with Rodolfo is done and I want to continue that. So, so far, six months in, it's been therapy and then um, coaching. Um, so I'm still on track there. And then for you, Justy, you had um, setting boundaries at work and relationships and travel. Yeah, so um, work, I'm doing pretty good. Um, you know, opening a bakery isn't easy. Um, I went straight from recovering from my surgery to opening a bakery Um but I have taken days off. I have taken time. I have said no. Um, and I have stayed on track. So during the whole opening of the bakery, they were getting pizza and burgers and all kinds of stuff. And I was eating my food that I prepped and I took with me and I was still going to the gym every day. And, um, I was still, if not writing it on paper, I was still mentally planning my, my food and what I was going to eat. So really good there. Um, with relationships, well, you know, um, we've kind of joked about steady Eddie and, you know, that is a person that, um, I have known and we are not, and we're just not in a relationship, um, because he lives in a different state. And so that was sort of, I think that was sort of just like a, a good way, not, I don't want to say pastime because I do care about him and he's a very nice person. Um, but he's just not for me. Um, and, um, so I'm, baby step opening my door to dating in Charlotte. Um, but I'm just really hesitant because what does dating mean? It means going out to eat. It means, you know, they're going to wine and have a drink and yeah. this and that, but listen, honestly, whoever I date, they are going to have to understand that health is my, it's my thing. And I'm not going to compromise my standards on that or with what I expect from them either. So baby stepping there. Um, and then with travel, well, we'll see, cause I'm going on a cruise. 
next week uh, I'll be going to uh, St. Croix and Tortuga and that sort of thing. So I'm leaving next week, but my girlfriend that I'm going with, um, I had a conversation with her and she's on board as well because she's been really trying to hit the fitness thing lately as well. Um, we're going to be doing the yoga classes. We're going to be doing the workout classes. We're going to do more active excursions. Her and I aren't big drinkers. Um, we're going to be mindful of our eating and kind of, I'm going to stick to my basics, uh, bottom line basics of travel, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to eat till full, I'm not going to eat less. I'm hungry. I'm going to drink plenty of water and I'm going to try to get some sleep. So yeah, I feel yep. like I feel like I'm doing pretty good. I didn't take a vacation yet this year. So with, tra and I haven't traveled, so it's hard for me to, I haven't, I've traveled a lot less than I ever have in my life. So, um, and I'm not probably not taking another vacation other than going to see George street in, um, August, I'm going down to Florida. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think you, I think you have the travel thing on lock anyhow, Yeah. honestly, I, I don't think that's of your three in that department. I think that's, that's the one that you have the most control over. And you yeah. know why? Because typically you're in control of it. Mm -hmm. Um, while you're going with other people, um, most of the time, cause sometimes you do travel alone, but you have mm -hmm. the most control over that. Um, when it comes to dating, not that you don't have control over that, but you, it happens to everybody when they get into a relationship. Like my husband gained like 50 pounds when we first met because you get comfortable mm -hmm. and I'm a chef. <laughs> right. So I and bet, I need, you know I what need, I mean? I need to find somebody who's going to, well, see, this is the thing though. Like, I don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> So yeah. I need someone who is going to support my goals without me feeling like they're being my father right? and without them enabling my desires rather than what I need to do for my future self. So it's just, right. it's, it's a hard balance, but I own that. I own right. what I put in my mouth. I own who I give my time to. I own how um, I will be treated. Like, so I have complete control and honestly, listen, I'm, I'm all right if I don't have anybody either, but I, I would like to find a partner at some point in my life. And, uh, so yeah, and I gotta put myself out there if that's ever going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. I mean, we're six months in and we're like right on the mark. The, I think I would say where we, where we've let off the gas pedal the most is probably around meal prep and plan. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, we recognize that we own that and we're taking that back. Um, and yeah, I think, sure. um, if you follow us on Instagram, you're probably going to see us posting a lot more about that. Right. Um, cause you can tell if you go back through our post, you can see where we kind of stop posting food altogether. Right. It's like, we're not <laughs> doing what we should be doing. Right. Not and I we're think... not eating the right things. We just weren't prepping and planning like we you know, like we want to. And so I want to hold our, both of us accountable to that. Yeah, for sure. And I think, um, yeah, I've had, I've had more conversations with myself lately about, okay, you're not hungry. This isn't on your plan that I, that I have before the beginning of the year. Or so, and that's because just lack of preparation. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I definitely, that's the, that's the one place that I think we, we can get better at. And, you know, again, life threw us a curve and, but we, I think we've done pretty well. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the old us would have been 20 pounds gained by now. And right. you know right. what I mean? Wondering why we didn't, you know, well, I don't know what's wrong with me. Well, we figured it out at least. <laughs> right. And yeah. I will say, I'm pretty proud of myself because that my weight goal, that 161, I haven't taken Manjaro in, in several weeks. It's yeah. been probably close to a month and I'm mm -hmm. still, I'm up from my lowest, but my lowest wasn't my best weight anyway for me. I 150 is not where I want to be. Um, right. That was too low for me anyhow. So, you know, 160, that's, my original goal was 165. My second goal was 155 and I'm right in the middle. And so I kind of want to just stay there, but that is, that is a Manjaro free mm -hmm. um, for about a month. Um, yeah. weight maintenance. So I'm and pretty I think, proud of that. I think it's important that, um, you know, when I was over 300 pounds, just the thought of being under 200 pounds was kind of my, my goal and what I was working for. Um, and now that I'm, it's so weird because now that I'm here, it just doesn't seem as important. Right. Um, as crazy as that sounds like to me, weight isn't that important anymore. I just feel so good 
that that's going to keep me um, doing what I'm doing. And listen, I love clothes and I can go in the store and buy anything now. Right. Uh, and it's great. Uh, the right. only problem I have is I'm tall and I have real long legs. So, um, but that my motivation for, but the scale, the motivation for the scale got me here. Um, yeah. so, so, um, so yeah. All right. Well, cool. Um, and I know what you're about to ask me. Yeah. So what's next? Yes. Well, here's the, what's next. Here's the problem. We're, um, we have, we have one, um, in the holster and that one, uh, I think is going to get pushed. So we're moving things around a bit. So what do we have in the holster, you know, I'm trying to think of that too. Shit. What did we just for excuses? excuses that's it bullshit excuses. excuses so bullshit excuses bullshit is on excuses. hold it's in the holster and it's on hold because um well this is well, i don't know what's bullshit excuse i don't know what's next after this because this one's actually bullshit excuses are going to come after this that's what's going to be because okay. i'm going pu to yeah. push that one off because i want to do this because we're at the six month mark but right. then the one that the other one is going to come first so bullshit and excuses that's... is next and then hopefully we'll have another guest on because I do have a few ideas for guests. So I need to reach out and, and coordinate schedules, but. And we're going to do a surviving the summer one too. But that's what going to be, that'll already be done before this one. Oh, gotcha. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're so recording out of like order. That one. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch it because we are um, in the throes of surviving the summer right now. So we want to get that out first because it's, it's timely and. Um, right. And so, yeah, so that one's going to, you'll have already seen that if you watch these in order. If you haven't, then go back and watch it. Um, and nice. then after this one will be bullshit excuses. And then hopefully we'll be able to get a guest on. Um, and, and you know, this, um, we knew we were doing this one, uh, but the summer one that we, you, you would have seen last, uh, for the last um, recording, um, just came about because I was thinking about it and I was like, thinking how like I don't have control of things right now or I don't feel like I do and I felt this way last summer and that's when I gained um like 40 pounds was the start mm -hmm. of it was last summer because it was like the kids out of school and you know you're just all over the place and you don't have that normal routine so um we kind yeah. of think of things on the fly it's like mm -hmm. well, I texted Jesse literally yesterday I was like hey here's what I think we need to do and she was like right and so then we just go with it so um after bullshit excuses i don't know but we'll come up with something fun <laughs> awesome all right well that's it for today yeah. we'll talk to you soon yeah have a good one guys bye bye